Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Justin Trudeau so rarely in the House of Commons anymore and with the budget looming. I I thought we should go over one of the times last week when um, the Conservatives and Justin Trudeau were talking about the $300 billion that he wants to borrow. A quarter of a trillion dollars. Imagine that. Imagine that. Through all of this, he's been telling you that the economy is going to turn around. Everything's going to work out fine. Everything is going to be about fairness. Everything is going to be about this and about that. While the debt just keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. When are these plans supposed to pay off? Always around the corner. Always next week. Always a time, some in the distant future. All of the things that you've taken care of so far have, have accomplished nothing. Now ask yourself, what are they holding on to? Right, Because they're clearly not doing it for me and you. They're not doing it for the common person. Or they would take one look out the window and say, listen, the, the country is in a disaster and I'm the only one that put us there so I need to get out of the way and give Canadians a chance to recover from this. What I, what I think is shocking is that people used to come to Canada because it was ahead of the rest of the world. And every time you turn around, all you hear is a liberal saying, well, the rest of the world has this problem and the rest of the world has this problem. If the rest of the world has the same problem, if we have the same problem as the rest of the world, why are we not doing something about it? Why are we telling ourselves that that's okay? I mean, it, name me any other subject that that would be okay. But they, they're just pushing you off. It's a stall tactic and because we have no, only independent voices talking about this issue in the, in the, in the space because the, the collusion between the government and the mainstream media they're getting away with it. So they're talking about the $300 billion last week. And uh, I want you to have a listen to it. I'm kind of grumpy about it. I'll be completely candid with you. I think that the, the entitlement is really, really shocking. All right. Before I get into it, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with your friends. I have memberships. If you'd like to become a member to support the channel, let's get into it. Prime Minister is not worth the cost of debt interest. He doubled our national debt, adding more debt than all previous prime ministers combined. And now we learn in his new budget bill that he's going to seek another $300 billion of debt, money that he will borrow out of the economy. That's equal to over 10% of our GDP, which will surely put upward pressure on interest rates. How much will all this government binge borrowing add to the mortgage payment of the average family? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, allow me once again to set the facts straight. Canada has one of the strongest fiscal positions of any country in the world. Certainly the lowest deficit in the G7, the best debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and it's continuing to decrease. And uh, we, have a, we are the third largest economy in the world with a triple A credit rating, the top credit rating by the agencies that look at fiscal sustainability of governments. All that is on the backdrop of further investments. We're making generational investments to support Canadians. Contrast with the ideology of the Conservatives, which is to leave Canadians to fend for themselves, cuts and austerity. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, we actually have the highest mortgage debt of any country in the G7 and by far. Higher as a share of our economy than the Americans had during the mortgage meltdown. Now, interest rates are higher and families risk losing their homes. Government deficits push inflation and interest rates higher. That makes the problem worse. So once again, how much will $300 billion of yet more debt add in mortgage payments for the average Canadian family? How much? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition is uh, mixing uh, different factors that are facing Canadians. Mortgages are high for Canadian families and therefore the Canadian government is choosing to invest in measures that are going to support Canadian families. I talked to a family from Burlington who actually saw their mortgage uh, increases go up, mortgage payments go up because of the rise in global interest rates while at the same oh time God. at the same time as uh, as 
as their child care fees were cut by larger amounts because of investments this government made. We're going to continue to be there for Canadians while the Conservative leader wants cut. Who believes that? Who believes that the interest on your $400,000 house is being offset by the uh, child care that you pay? Who believes that? Who can look at this guy and say, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm paying the bank an extra $1,500 a month, an extra eight to $10,000 a year, just an in interest that doesn't even cover the principal of my house. It's just pure interest. But don't worry about it because the daycare, well, we're only paying that in taxes. Because he wants you to think that the money that, that he pays the daycare lady isn't your tax dollars, which it completely is. So now he's, you're taking, he's taking your tax dollars and giving it to the daycare center, all the while you're paying more money to the bank for you to live in your house. And he wants you to somehow think that he's doing you a favor. He wants you to thank him. He wants you to say that he's the wonderfulest guy ever in the whole wide world. Unbelievable. Mr. Speaker, inflation and higher interest rates, the cost Canadians pay for the, for the spending that the Prime Minister told them was free. It's not free. Nothing is free. Every dollar he spends comes out of the pockets of Canadians directly through taxes or indirectly through inflation and interest rates. Now he wants to do another $300 billion of binge borrowing. Will he put aside that radical scheme and instead my, accept my common sense plan to fix the budget with a dollar for dollar law so we can bring down interest rates and inflation for Canadians? Here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have been there to invest for Canadians responsibly. We still have uh, one of the top uh, AAA rated economies in the world. Uh, our fiscal plan is sustainable and responsible. However, the Conservative leader still wants to make cuts to programs, cuts to our military, cuts to the initiatives that are helping Canadians across the country. The things that we are doing are helping Canadians grow for the future in a responsible way, and that's why we're seeing inflation come down and interest rates will be coming down, I'm sure, in the coming months. I'm sure they'll be coming down in the coming months, he says. That's exactly what, oh, I'm sure of it. Don't worry about it. Any day now, everything is going to be this utopia that I've been describing to you for 10 years, nearly 10 years, for nine years. Who believes that when they go to the grocery store and see that a loaf of bread is $5? Loaf of bread. We grow more wheat in this country than most of the world put together, but somehow a loaf of bread's $5. Gas is through the roof. Everything is through the roof. Every expense we have is, is driven by the economy that this government created. There's no magic uh, weapon that's going to all of a sudden, you know, oh, or magic wand, I should say, that's going to make the whole thing just get fixed overnight. You have to be responsible with your money, just like you do in the real world. Why in your mind do you tell yourself that it, it's, it, you have to balance your budget, but the government doesn't have to balance theirs? And somehow that's going to make your life better because the government has not balanced its budget. How many people are sitting there right now telling themselves that if I, sitting there trying to figure out how they can put something on one credit card to pay off the other credit card to hope that that debt can be pushed off for 60 more days. You can't have the, the, the cost of living go through the roof and tell yourself that the, the world is a better place. It's all promises, right? It's nothing, nothing concrete, nothing tangible, nothing you can touch. The housing is a disaster. They can throw up one of these $15 billion factories to build an EV car in a couple of months, but they can't seem to get, to get any houses built to put where the staff is going to work. Then they're going to say you can't drive to work. I mean... <laughs> The absurdity of the argument from the liberals that somehow by borrowing, by putting yourself deeper and deeper and deeper in debt, by pulling on the economy, by draining all of the spare money that you have is somehow going to improve your standard of living, is somehow going to improve Canada's um, economy. This is what you're saying to yourself. You're saying to yourself, when you sit at home at night and you're thinking about things and you say to yourself, gee, it would be nice if every dime I had was accounted for on my debts. Or do you say to yourself, geez, it'd be nice if I could put some money in the bank and maybe spend it on any, something that I want to buy, something for me. Which one do you think it sounds more reasonable to the, to the lifestyle that you're trying to live? 
So why can't the government provide that for you? Because the government is sinking you under crushing amounts of debt. $300 billion they now want to borrow. Where's that money going? Are you telling me that this lunch that they're investing in? For nine years, they've been investing. Why do they need more money? They should be getting a payoff on that investment. They should be getting a return on that investment. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I'm sure I'll have more to say about this in the coming uh, weeks. I want to thank you all for listening. I would appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with your friends. I'll talk to you next time.